me and my friend said actually we should just start our own team and start playing football um, to which I said yeah fine and um, we just a fun side and literally uh, my friend uh, had a Peter Buckland had a kitchen company in 1999 he had a kitchen company and literally he shouted up the, as I was leaving he shouted up the stairs what should we call it quickly and I went well Dawkins something I said you want to have a Dawkins in the name and he, sh and he shouted up the stairs what Wanderers I went yeah that'll do and I walked out the door That's how the club was formed, 1999. We needed to find a league to go into. So somebody said, well, join the Crawley District League. We, we started in Division 4. And basically, it was structured that you'd have a game of football and then a fight afterwards. So um, it was rough and ready, these leagues. And it was just fun. And we just kept winning and winning and winning. The Wanderers quickly was, were going right through the leagues, winning league after league after league. And that was the stage then that I was getting on a bit. I hadn't retired yet, so I decided to come down and play. So I actually played at Brockham on the big field and all the boys, and it was like, a, you know, boys putting up the net. Or, so obviously as a senior player, what you want to do is get the young lads out early to put the nets up first and all that, so you didn't have to do it. And that's how we used to do it. So, so th this was our, our very first pitch, we, uh, our very first pitch we started on. And we used to drag the nets literally 200 metres from the rugby club over here it cost 50 quid a, a game the players would arrive at eight or just sit around the corner in the hope that they didn't have to the first ones here would have to drag the nets over so it all began here for us we started to become a real good side for about four or five years we got promoted three times then we got into the big promotion was about five six years ago where we got into the uh, in the county we got right up to the county league county level three and at that time our team was as good as you know anyone around we moved into moved into West Humble and this when we first moved in this was just a field and whatever else we needed a new ground because the council field you could only do so so much on so then we literally walked around we went to all the places in Dorking and we got invited to go down to uh, what you know now to be West Humble uh, some guy showed us around and he, and he walked around there really negatively this guy and the grass was knee high and it's an old sports ground that belonged initially to the Ashcombe School in Dorking um, and it's a field and trust property so oh, yeah, it was, it's just a field that's kept in trust um, has a lots of rules and caveats on it he, he took us to this area of the field and said look it's knee high he said people have looked at this before there's nothing you can do with it. He said, there's no electricity and there's no water. There's nothing here. He goes, but if you want to use it, you can use it, it's yours. We came here, as I say, there was nothing. And all the boys during a the pre-season, there was, there was an old shed over there and all the boys in the pre-season were burning and painting it all out. And even then, all of this wasn't here. It was just literally a field over there. There was none of the new. So, but it was still, the pitch was perfect and it was a nice wide pitch. And it was just, a, it, it was your own pitch. When we came here, that was really the start of the upward, real upward trajectory of the club. Facilities, you know, not the best, but still it's your, your own ground. So, and it, we could attract better players and young, you know, a lot of younger players that, that got us through the leagues. Off the field now, the club's in its best ever shape probably up to 25 people in various roles uh, across the board which you know we go to clubs that have been in existence for 100, 100 years plus struggling to get volunteers etc so quite proud of the fact really just 17 years in we've got a really solid foundations to the club and I think what people like about it is it still continues to be somebody's project the project of Dawkins Wanderers local people um, local volunteers. We find it quite easy to get people engaged with our club because it's a genuine success story. There's not a chairman who's trying to produce good profits. This is a pure, this is a pure project. This is real life championship manager. That's what people, 
you know, call it. It's like, you know, st start a football team and keep going through the leagues like on your computer. We really believe that we'll be a professional football club. Three promotions, I think, from professional football. Uh, one, two, yeah, three. Where it would be professional football. We've done, we've done more than that already. We, I really believe that, um, and we do, that it'll be easier to achieve being a professional football club than what we've done already. We literally, the challenges are incredible. People don't realise what the club's been through. Even things like putting three concrete paths and, and, and 250 seater stand cost a lot of money. But the real challenge is not just financial, but we, we've been based on a property that's owned by Fields in Trust. Um, it's in an area of outstanding natural beauty with its own committee. So it's, it's in the backdrop of Box Hill, so therefore it has its own committee. So it's green belt planning rules, which mean green belt planning, there's no such thing as temporary planning even. So if you want to do a, even a, um, literally a port would need permanent planning on green belt land. So we've had all the planning issues. We have local residents that care dearly about the field because it backs onto their, uh, their beautiful houses and it's um, Fields and Trust also has strict rules within operating on their fields. So one being you can't charge essentially to get into a Fields and Trust property. Two being you cannot exclusively enclose a Fields and Trust property. Uh, three being you cannot have a sponsorship um, um, within a Fields and Trust property. So we've had all these w things we've had to work around as well. So we've had loads of challenges and so no club has worked harder off the field, um, so to, to, to achieve what we've achieved on the field as well. It was such a well publicised success story that the local council acknowledged that and so did Dorking Football Club uh, with respect to them and um, you know as a result of that there's a £6 million project and a brand new stadium being built um, which we're planning to move into with, with Dorkin Football Club and we've now formed an alliance with them. There are very few football grounds in non-league football now where the town centre location is, is preserved essentially because what they've tended to do in every single town is sell off the main sites and then put the local football club on the outskirts somewhere cheaper. And the local authority in Dorking, um, alongside Dorking Football Club, have made sure they preserve this venue right in the middle of town. Um, we've all come together, we're going to share the ground, and um, we would expect attendances and interest in both clubs um, to accelerate. This is, this is the home of um, football in Dorking for as long as anyone who lives in the local area would remember. So I came, my first ever game of football, spectating, was around about five, six years old, um, Dorking Football Club v Cray Wanderers. So I came down here with my granddad and watched my first ever game of football. And I'd imagine anybody in Dorking south of 50, 55 years old is the same. And that's a huge bit of legacy. It's got one of the best backdrops in, in the country in terms of Box Hill, which, um, is over there and it's got the St Martin's Spire there famously as well. It's going to be an artificial pitch, um, there's going to be infrastructure for the community as well as for the football clubs that are going to use it and being an artificial pitch on top of the senior football clubs you've got a mass benefit to all of the local footballing uh, community in terms of uh, the youth element where it can be used for, for training and, and matches all week round. Uh, and there's going to be a coffee shop and soft play etc um, in the park as well. So a significant local project, primarily Dorking Football Club, um, new owners ensured that this was going to happen and everybody should be grateful to that. Our relationship with Dorking has benefited both clubs as much as we'll share the facility and it'll have a significant difference I think to both clubs in terms of support base. Old fashioned stuff really, people able to walk out of any one of these chimney pots as they say, surrounded by houses and the town centre and watch a game of football. I don't think anyone deserves anything but in, in terms of having an opportunity to bear the fruits of the hard work we put in, it's nice to be able to play from the central town centre location. 
I think we've put so much effort, time and, and money into what we've, what we've done as a project. It's nice to get that recognised, not just by local authority, but by the uh, by Dorking Football Club who've been in, in existence since uh, the late 1800s. Uh, so I think we feel privileged that's been recognised and feel flattered and we're really excited by you know, what this is going to be down here. It'll be finished hopefully by end of June um, 17. It should be transformed. It's going to be incredible. The kind of benchmark of where you come from, where you're going to. We, used to, we literally used to drag out jumpers for the goalposts. We had a game called off once because a Shetland pony invaded the pitch in Crawley. <laughs> it's a totally true. <laughs> totally true. There's a gypsy site next door and a Shetland pony invaded the pitch and the kids wouldn't get off it. So the ref called it off. <laughs> um, you know, but now we're selling season tickets. That, that, that is the kind of where you've come from, where you are. What we're, what we're hoping people recognise with is the project, because uh, the project could happen on, on anyone's, uh, in anyone's backyard, if you like. What we try to bring back and people identify with is we're trying to bring back the dad that comes down with his children to watch the game and the really great work Chris has done with the youth section now. We get, uh, last year we gave out um, all of our youth section we gave free passes for all the first team games bar FA competitions it's against the rules and they could uh, they would come free with their kids for free any other adults half price i think so all year long increasingly we would have a game and we'd have kids in the kits and their dads in the scarves i like like all of the fans and like they have like all of the like the bar over there and at half time you're like allowed to go on the pitch and it's like fun because like like all of your friends could be here your family and you can like have fun and I also like it because you just like i like watching the players and like staying up all late <laughs> yeah my nan my my nan is back there I used to play down at Dorking myself, and um, but my nan every single Saturday would watch out the window and try and watch the game, and uh, you know she and, and I'd be down there, and then she'd put my kids on the kitchen, and my kids would would look out and try and try and spot me down the ground, and uh, so it's, it's, it, it, it is a, you know, it's a per I think um, it's a personal thing for me in some respects. I always measure the football club by my daughter because she's. Uh, um, my, my ex was pregnant at the time, and uh, so in 1999. So um, if I look back then to to when we started it and the intentions behind it, you couldn't have dreamt really you could get where you get to. It just shows really hard work in any kind of project. You need people involved with the right intentions, uh, people involved for the right reasons. No one's ever been financially motivated at any point. <laughs> you can't be in non-league football. Um, and there's probably a capita really, in some respects, of how far you can take it um, on that basis. We couldn't have dreamt. We couldn't have dreamt to have had the success we've already had, let alone how much opportunity uh, the new venue would give us. Um, and we always seem as a club, without trying really, every year to create a few new firsts. There always seems to be something happening that's not happened before. We don't tend to stand still and long may that continue. We're just trying to engage more and more people with the club.